Do you want to know how to make it to graduation? Keep watching and I'll tell you how. I'm Dr. Marquette and my channel is all about helping you graduate with your doctorate. Benvenuti scholars, congratulations. You've embarked on one of the most important journeys of your life, pursuing your doctorate. You probably know that only one to 3% of the world's population has achieved this terminal degree. Many start, but few finish. Today, I'm going to introduce to you the 10 things to keep in mind for success as you begin your first year as a doctoral student. Let's get into it. Number one, the first thing you wanna do is set a goal for graduation. Now that may seem obvious, but many people start their programs and they take it as it comes. But if you don't know when you want to graduate, it's hard to orient your behaviors today. But scholar practitioners are a different group of people. We have careers, we have families, we have challenges in our lives. And while our programs may say we have the opportunity to graduate in 36 or 40 months or 44 months, <clears throat> things that we face individually may make that difficult for us to do. So it's important to look at our lives and say, what family obligations do I have? What job obligations do I have? I have colleagues who faced major job changes. Some faced cancer. Some became single parents. And all of those life changes required them to set realistic goals. Those realistic goals for graduation allow you to orient your work today so that you know what to do now to get to that end result. Number two is to develop a plan around your topic or area of study. Now, of course, your coursework is going to prepare you to become an expert in your space. But it's important to pick at least a general topic so that you know what you're going to be studying. And in conjunction with that topic, it's important to know what your program's milestones are. Let's call it a milestone guide. It's important to understand what the milestones are in your program in conjunction with your topic. And then you want to build a plan of action around those milestones and your topic. Now this is not easy and this will take several hours to do. What's important to understand is that you're going to have demands with your coursework, demands with your professional life and your personal life, and you want to start incorporating the work around your dissertation topic while you're doing those things. If you don't have the plan, then you don't know what you need to do each step along in the journey. Number three, constantly revise this plan because if you don't come back to this every 30 days, it's very easy for life to get in the way and you look back and that plan doesn't have any reflection on what you're really doing. And if we're not flexible and constantly revising our plan, then our plan becomes something that's stale, that no longer helps us along the journey. Number four, immerse yourself in the literature. Read two peer-reviewed articles every day. Now you're thinking, wow, these peer-reviewed articles are long. How do I read two peer-reviewed articles every day? Well, you're not gonna read these articles the way you may have read things in the past. You're going to read these articles with a very critical eye. What I want you to do when you look at an article is read the abstract, find out what their research problem was, what are the research questions, what's the method and the design, what were their findings, what were the limitations, and what were the recommendations. By going through that list when you read these articles, you'll get mostly what you need, and you'll also find if that article warrants a full reading. So we don't read every article all the way through to the end, but instead we look for those ingredients to see that I get what I needed from that article at that point. If you can commit to two articles a day by, and immerse yourself in the literature, you'll find yourself miles ahead of everyone else because this will accelerate your process probably more than anything else. 
Number five, place all of these works that you're reading in an annotated bibliography tool. I mentioned this before in my video regarding literature review. There are many tools out there to place these articles in. Mendeley, Zotero, EndNote, RefWorks. Now, I don't specifically recommend any one of those over another because they don't sponsor me. Now, if one were to sponsor me, I would probably recommend that one. So do but by placing them in these bibliography tools, then you have easy access to it and you can incorporate that into your writings in the future. There's no way if you're reading two articles a day at the end of a year or so that you could remember all of these. But if you use the proper tools, it makes it easy for you to organize your work going forward and insert them into the subsequent papers and your dissertation as you write it. This video may be helpful to you in that area. Number six, use your coursework in tandem with your topic. Most programs require papers and participation in discussion forums and responses to your peers, but not specifically to your topic. Now, if you can move your papers in the direction of your topic and your discussion forum posts in the area of your topic, and your responses to other people in your participation in the area of your topic. Now you're taking the work that you're reading every day and you're incorporating it into your daily work in your coursework. Utilizing the two articles you're reading every day and putting it into your annotated bibliography. And that way you take the work of your dissertation and the work of your coursework and you start to blend it so they're complementary. Now we have the coursework and your dissertation work, and we're melding them together so that we're accomplishing both goals at the same time. Number seven, become a dissertation expert. Once a week, put those two articles aside and read a dissertation. One little trick that I would give you, read your professor's dissertation. If you wanna know what their favorite dissertation looks like, read theirs because that's usually their favorite dissertation. But it'll also give you insight on how they see the world. When you read dissertations, I suggest you go to your university and read dissertations of the method and design that you think you're going to use. Not the topic, but the method and design. Now you're gonna look at these dissertations, not like you're looking at literature, but more like the way an architect may look at a building. How is this constructed? What is their research problem? What is their purpose? What are their research questions? What is their method? What is their design? How are they doing their data collection? How are they doing their data analysis? By going through those checklist of items, it informs you and teaches you how to do yours. And now think about it. After a year, if you've read 52 or more dissertations, you're gonna know a thing or two about writing a dissertation yourself. All of that information will help you become a dissertation expert. And when it's time to write your dissertation, you'll be way ahead of everyone else who hasn't read the same number of dissertations as you have. The time will come when you're writing portions of your dissertation, say chapter two, and you're looking at writing your theoretical framework. And it's so helpful to have read several dissertations and have those to refer to to say, how did they pose this particular problem while writing theirs? And when you can see how they've done it or see how a few that you really like have done it, it makes it so much easier for you to replicate those same sections in your dissertation or your dissertation proposal. There may be even times when you look at their dissertation, paragraph by paragraph, compared to yours, and it will help you with that specific structure which as a side note, is exactly why you want two or more screens. Now, I'm gonna go in a little different direction on number eight. Remain balanced. There's an old saying that you cut more wood with a sharp ax. I believe that we're mind, body, spirit creatures, and so it's important that we take care of our health, our relationships, and our faith and spirituality. Now, for me, Making sure that I stay connected with my spouse and my family members is critical. What does it profit a person to gain the whole world or their dissertation 
and to have lost their soul in their relationships. And you never know. When you're hitting the gym, when you think I've got too much work to do and I don't have time, you may be hit with that piece of insight that helps you move forward. My experience is, is that if you make time for those things, somehow the work gets done and it's done more efficiently and more productively. So my invitation to you for number eight is to remain balanced. Take care of your health, take care of your relationships, and take care of your faith and spirituality. Number nine, forgive yourself for not being perfect. Be kind to you. You're gonna stumble, you'll make mistakes. I know that you probably really succeeded in your undergrad, really succeeded in your master's, and have probably built a stellar career, and are a great parent, and a great spouse, and have all of these things that have been successful for you, but this is different. This phase of the journey, and it's almost a little shock to the system when it doesn't go as easily or as successfully as it has in the past. But you have to forgive yourself because part of being kind to yourself is knowing that you've never done this before. We all struggle, we all stumble at it. So know it's coming and don't kick your own ass. Process will out your help. This process is fraught with feedback and little failures and little struggles. So you have to understand that those things are coming. Part of the process is receiving feedback and showing you where you can improve. And this happens over and over. We refer to this as the iterative process. It's not easy. And you'll put in your best work and you'll think you've done everything great. And then you get more feedback again and you're not quite there. And you have to forgive yourself knowing that this is coming. In fact, if you want, check out our video on how to handle feedback. That will help you understand that what you're going through is normal. The stumbles are going to come. So dust yourself off, be nice to yourself and say, I knew it was coming. Be kind to you. The only thing that scholar practitioners who graduate with their doctorate have in common is they're the ones that didn't quit. Number 10, have fun. You're becoming a rare member of society. You know, for many of us scholar practitioners, 25 years ago, earning a degree like this while working our career and serving our families would have not ever been possible. It would have even been thinkable. So have fun, enjoy this. So let's approach it with a joyful heart and with gratitude and to have fun while doing it. Most people I know, they receive this terminal degree and they mean terminal as in they're not getting any more. So if this is gonna be the last degree you get, it's time to have fun doing it and embrace the growing process. Hopefully, this has helped you prepare for the best first year you could possibly have in your doctoral program. Let me help you get to graduation.